All right, what's up, my friends? Welcome. We have a crazy day for you all. Modern, modern, modern. War of a Spark has been making waves in Standard, but it's also perhaps one of the most influential sets in Modern in a long time. We have five crazy decks we're playing today with tons of War of a Spark cards, and we're starting with this one. This is a very interesting take on the like Legends and Taxes deck. So when Mox Amber came out, People were like, wow, there's a lot of one mana white legends in uh, in modern. <laughs> Banana, thanks to the resub. I don't I don't know who Vince Pleasant can uh, okay, I, I don't know his I don't know his like mannerisms. Um so Mox Amber, obviously whenever a mox comes out, people go crazy. People are like, there's a ton of ton of white one one drop legends. We got Isamaru, we got Kithian, we got Rise the Redeemed. Not too hard to turn on Mox Amber. The question, of course, is the payoff there, and it kind of wasn't. This deck's been tried a few times, I've tried it, others have tried it too, and while Mox was good, the deck was kind of inconsistent, and a little lacking in, uh, just a little lacking in, like, overall endgame, and in, in power level, and War of a Spark gives us a whole bevy of new options, so, where do we even start? We got Planeswalkers, of course, we have the new Gideon Blackblade, uh, just powerful Planeswalker, um, obviously weak to Path to Exile, but good against most other things. Just powerful, aggressive Planeswalker. Joins Gideon of Trials for a nice little 1-2 punch. We have Dovin Hand of Control. Kind of an innocuous looking card that's like fine and limited, but taxing instants and sorceries and artifacts is pretty good in, uh, in the modern format. And of course, we have the ability to cast this early, perhaps on turn 2, uh, with Mox Amber or another card we're going to see in a little bit. And we have Karn the Great Creator. So this card's being talked about in Vintage and a bunch of things. Uh, also seeing play now in Mono Green Tron as for its tutoring ability. And Karn gives us access to a whole prison-y sideboard of a bunch of stuff. We got Chalice of the Void. We got Walking Blista. We'll save the big one for later. We got Damping Sphere. We got Liquid Metal Coating so we can turn their lands into artifacts and then kill them with the plus. We've got Torpor Orb, Craft Digger's Cage, Pithing Needle, Tormod's Crypt, and then Welding Jar to back up any of these that we get. Most importantly, we have Microsynth Lattice. So, when this card's in play, all permanents are artifacts, and Karn's static ability says that activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. So, basically all their lands turn off. So it's a, a one-card, essentially two-card combo to lock your opponent out of the game. So you have access to that as well with our cards, which is pretty cool. Now, all of these cards are a little expensive, so we got to get uh, some mana acceleration here to make them more profitable. Of course, Mox Amber, and then the must for often forgotten Cloud Keeper, a legendary land comes to play tapped. It's an ancient tomb for legendary spells, so this can cast our Heart of Kirin, our Dovin, our Karn. It can cast everything with a discount. Obviously, you can't cast our one drops and stuff, but being able to cast Karn, Dovin, Thalia, or Heart of Kirin early is pretty powerful. Um, only playing two of those. Thalia is a weird card in this deck because it's a legend. We want it for Mox Amber. It's just a very, very good card in Modern, one of the best creatures in Modern. It does tax our Planeswalkers and stuff, so we're not really sure about that. Heart of Kirin is pretty interesting. Um, we have a lot of Planeswalkers, obviously. It's legendary permanent, which is cool. Um, that's pretty sweet. But we don't have a ton of three power creatures to crew it. Obviously, we have our Planeswalkers. Ursa's Ruinous Blast is a really powerful card. Uh, just all is dust, one sided for five mana, which is pretty cool. Uh, not sure how many of those we want. Then we have another good new card in Mobilize District. This card's great. There's never been a creature land before that can activate for free. And with enough legends in play, this is just a free 3 3 with Vigilance, which is awesome. So, really, really cool. This deck is pretty resilient to uh, Wrath of God effects, given all the Planeswalkers, the Heart of Curance, and the Creature Lands. We're also rocking the Leonid Arbiter Ghost Quarter package. Um, I'm not really sure. This package always confuses me, because half the time it's really, really good, and half the time it just sucks. You don't draw Arbiter, you can't cast your spells with Ghost Quarter, it's just a mess. And then half the time you're just like strip mining your opponent over and over again, crushing them. So, a lot of questions here. A lot of questions here. Uh, a similar deck to this 5-0 to League on Magic Online, and I've taken it and put my own spin on it. So, Horizon Canopy, Castle, um, a lot of questions with this deck. 
Do I, do I even want Thalia? Do I even want Arbiter? Um, is two colors the way to go? A lot of questions. A lot of questions. And we're going to try and answer them right now. So let's go. Deck one of five today. Legend Daxes. Let's roll. Trax, three month resub. Welcome back. Have some money less than three psych to band it up in queues next week. Also, in honor of this deck, Garrick is slaying Dovin as we speak. Awesome, Trax. Happy to hear Garrick's doing good. Trax got a, a gerbil named Garrick who's carrying on in Burnsy's, uh, Burnsy's footsteps, eating magic cards, having a great time. Right, I agree Thalia feels a little rough. Like, Thalia is obviously very powerful, but I do agree it is a little a little off in the deck. So, we're going to try it out. This is obviously always a learning process where we're trying to figure out what we want, what we want to do. Um, okay, so this was a fear I had. With the list, the list that I saw only had uh, 13 white sources. I actually added one or two. Um, but this is obviously a fear where this hand would be great if we had a white source, but we don't. We can't cast anything. So, we get a mulligan this hand, unfortunately. Right. This hand plays. We are on the play, or the turn two Gideon. Um, Canopy will hopefully help us find some more spells. Bone of Mulligans also. Bone of Mulligans the five. All right. Karn the Great Creator. We're going to keep that one right on top. We got our nice one, three, four curve. Uh, we're not going to play our mocks because we don't want to, if they have option of like Serum Visions or Shock Isamaru, we don't want to let them know that we uh, Isamaru is important. What's up, Toolboxer? What's up, Pants? How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the stream. Modern Day, War of the Spark in Modern. A lot of, a lot of modern cards in War of the Spark. Spirits, eh? That should be fine for us. Colin, Risa, welcome back, my friend. Selling out all over again. All over again. I like it. All right, so pretty good start here. Brawler, new sub. What's your name? Where are you from? Welcome, my friend. Questions are in chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got Karn on tap. Um, what's Karn want to get against the Spirits deck? I'm not really sure. Not really sure. Uh, sharks. It's going to be Sharks, Boston in the finals, and Boston will probably win in like six or seven. Supreme Phantom. That's pretty good. It's going to be a little hard to protect our Gideon here, honestly. Um, so the question is, what are we even carning for? That's, that's kind of the big issue. Like, we're definitely plussing Karn. We can't really attack. Um... I mean, we're minus a card, I mean. Alright, what do we got in here? Anything cool? Yes, I want to use the ability right into my sideboard. A Ballista. Ballista's alright. We have Chalice, Damping Sphere. Torpor Orb. Yeah, that's, not, that's good against humans. I guess it's just Ballista. I don't know if Ballista's going to kill anything, though. This seems kind of hard, honestly. Ratchet Bomb on the sideboard? There's so many cards that could be in the sideboard. The fear is you don't want to go too overboard. Um, Ratchet Bomb is an interesting one, though. That's definitely an interesting one. All right, I think it's just Ballista here. Um, it's not great, honestly. We get the Ballista plus here, but now we're not really, like, getting anywhere. Hedges, 13-month resub. Welcome back. Chalice for two. Like, yeah, they have twos in their deck. They also have ones and threes, you know? And we also have twos in our deck, so... It 
It's like I might want Gideon ally of Zendikar. It's like a one of. That card's really powerful. Blazing Sound, 8 month resub. Welcome back. Contagion Engine? That's that's a lot of mana, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we can actually win. Like, this, this matchup seems pretty hard. We don't really interact with creatures that well. And I guess Urzan is Ruinous Blast, but they have, like, heck, this thing and stuff. Like, they have free reign to attack my Planeswalkers, and I can't really attack them. They're at 11. So they're attacking Karn, so Karn can't minus. Um... So your next turn, one target. It's a plus. I can't even... Is it up to? It's up to. Um... I can't even shoot this thing. This is tough. Honestly, I, I don't really know what our way out of this is. We could like crack canopy and try and draw a path. Um, but uh, these flying creatures just make our planeswalkers look really bad, unfortunately. Um, hard cure would be good, I guess. I'll right, just draw a card. Plus on two is not doing anything. News up is Jay from New York. Playing Magic since cons. Here, card. Grizzle Brand. Favorite deck. Mono Green Tron. You're not a new. Yeah, you're sub. Sweet. You know, I don't know where your badge is, but. Ensnaring Bridge. Ensnaring Bridge is interesting. It's kind of a weird card because we can't. I don't know if we can win with an Ensnaring Bridge in play. But it could allow us to set up, um. To set up, like, Karn stuff. And then kill their stuff and then do it. That's kind of cool. Bridge might be necessary. Uh, we can't get Blast Zone, but, um, yeah, I can see a bridge on the sideboard. Uh, Definitely lacking in good uh, anti-creature options for our Karn board at the moment. Is Karn the Blast Zone deck? You'll have to find out. We got five decks on tap today. So, even if we draw Urza's Ruinous Blast, they just counter it. So, alright, we're just gonna go to the next game. Alright. Okay, two month resub, welcome back. Okay, um. Bring the extra path. I'll uh, bring in the Urza's Ruinous Blast. I think we're cutting our Thalias. They don't do much here. And then we're going to leave like the Ballista in the board. This seems pretty hard, honestly. Um, their creatures just... Their, ev their evasive creatures match up well match up well against my Planeswalkers. Um, Could have gotten Needle for Wanderer, so Urza's was an out. We only have one Urza's in our deck. but And they have like... I guess they don't have that many other counter spells that can counter it. Maybe. Maybe. Let's try again. What date of his 5-0? I'm not sure. It's on there somewhere. If you go to MTG Goldfish, you can just, like, search for the card Dove in Hand of Control, and it's only in one deck, so. Favorite color combination for Control? In what, in what format? In Modern? What do I think of Arclight Phoenix and the Boros Feather deck? How are you putting it in the graveyard? Burn it. 
Yeah, it seems like his deck is going to struggle a bit against the, the tribal, like, go-wide decks. Because we only have Path to Exiles removal. Um, that's where Urza's Ruinous Blast really shines. But most of the tribal decks have some form, uh, some form of disruption. I mean, Esper Control is definitely the best control deck in standard by a mile right now. So... Uh, Partridge, it's, it doesn't seem great uh, without the cantrips. Blue is pretty important for Arclight, usually. It's possible. It's a cool juke. What's the best deck in Standard? I mean, right now Standard is a trifecta of Mono Red decks, Nexus of Fate decks, and Esper Control decks. The Bant deck is also a thing. Alright, let's try that one again. Alright, that was pretty pretty good that game too, but Oh boy. This is a hand. Um We have triple path. But we can't cast Gideon. We don't really have much to cast with our our ancient tomb at the moment. Obviously we can draw some good stuff. You probably need to mulligan this hand. Um, if this is a car, we can keep it, but... Yeah, I think we mulligan. Even though we have three path, like, we have no pressure. I'm gonna mulligan. Heh. <laughs> Yikes. Alright, well, we're gonna keep this one. Let's hope we have a land. We're probably in trouble here. I'm not sure I like this Leon and Arbiter package either. What good two mana legends are there? Like, I suppose the deck doesn't need to be mono white either, right? Tilt. Uh, alright, I mean. Double Vial. Alright, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, this thing only casts, like, 8, 10 cards in our deck. So it's possible, like, you need to make this card be more, like, make this card more, uh, more good to play it. More good, good English. I mean, eight and a half tails. That card's not very good. The problem is that white white cards are not going to work with all of our all our colorless lands. The problem with the Arbiter package is the only deck I've ever liked the Arbiter package in is. Um, is my my Loxobots deck, which was so aggressive that your your curve was almost topping out on the owner arbiter. Um, this deck's playing four drops. Don't even want to wasteland honestly. That often, or strip mine as people love to yell at me for. Kataki exists. Ellipsis. We're playing Mox Amber. And Karn. Thanks for following everyone. If you haven't followed, hit that follow button. Of course, welcome, welcome, welcome. Cloudkeeper does cast Urza's Ruinous Blast, too. Alright. I mean... Spider space, spider space... I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do?
Alright, so obviously, tough match there. Um, tribal matchups seem tough. Um, with with a, a wide creature base and evasion, our Planeswalkers just aren't great. Um, yeah, Gideon Allies Endicar seems kind of cool. That makes our Cloud Keepers better. Maybe it's possible we want more Ursus Ruinous Blasts. Um, the problem is the two drop slot. I just don't like Arbiter that much. I don't like Thalia that much. Srom and Kintaro, yep. Yeah. If we cut the Leon and Arbiter package, we also cut the Ghost Quarters. And that gives us a lot more colored sources. So we could play possibly like the two the two three flying legend, the new one. Alright. Let us try again. Keep. Opponent Mulligans. We got a keep ski here. Yeah, in other colors, I mean, Arayo is not very good. We're not going to be flipping Arayo anytime soon. Put them all against the five on the play. Eldrazi Temple. Yeah, Cloudkeep doesn't look, so, look, look too good so far. Flip, flip. That's a legend. Add a reshaper, actually not bad against us here. Um, I don't think I want to trade. Yeah, we'll just ship the turn, I guess. I guess I do kind of want to trade because I have another Ismaru in my hand, but it's not a very good trade. And if I just play Gideon next turn, I get to attack with everything. I guess I have the District to attack with, so that's the third creature for Kithian. But then I can't protect the Kithian. I should attack. I should have. Yeah, this is fine. Chalice of the Void. Alright, well... Isamara may be off the menu. That's okay, though. They play Chalice. They have nothing else. We have Gideon. We have Mobilized District. District is really good. Arbiter? Never mind. We'll just Arbiter go score to them. Like, when it's good, it's good. The problem is it's just not often that good. Alright, well, now the game is probably over. Little life linky, little tax keys. Opponent's got one land in play. They have dismember. Ooh, dismember makes Gideon look kind of dumb. Walking blister on one. All right, so that does it for Kithian. Um, this thing costs, I can't cast my one drops, this costs three to activate, no, it's not a legend, can't even activate it, that's still, alright, let's fire off canopy here, let's see what we draw, that's annoying, alright,
Simeon Spirit Guide into the Exile Zone. Matter Reshaper, too powerful. Dovin Hand of Control. To the next turn, prevents all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by in a permanent your opponent controls. Doesn't seem particularly great in the current scenario. Uh, Alright, I mean, we're going to wasteland them, or strip mine them. I I guess we're attacking. Scar doesn't really do anything against them. Um, for the most part. I don't think I want to trade. Yeah, I'm just going to play this. And ship a turn. Eldrazi Temple. Thalia Heretic Cathar. That's pretty good. Alright, now I'm willing to attack. Fine with this trade, and now we're playing. They got a Thought Knot Seer. That's pretty good. Cloud Keeper, Thalia, and now whatever they play comes in tapped. We have two two good attackers. They didn't even draw lands. That's cool. Yeah, trading a mana, mana shapers stinks, but it's got to get out of the way at some point. If I just minus Dovin on it, attack, they just block and they attack back and kill Dovin, and, or just don't attack. It's just not great. Um, all right. So what do we want here? I don't think we want Thalia. Um, I want Ruinous Blast. I want Path to Exile. Chalice is pretty annoying. Um, Maybe we're like shaving a one drop or two. Um, I don't really want damping sphere. I just leave it in the sideboard. Um, I guess this is fine. Chalice on one is pretty annoying, but not a ton we can do about it. Um, I do kind of wish I had more of this card, honestly. This card might actually be like an important part of a deck in any fair matchup. Um, let's try this. Of course, one of the downsides to having a, a sideboard like this with all your Karn wish targets is that you don't have a lot of real sideboard cards. So, uh, I don't think I like a Cory on the draw. Point of Mulligans to six. Our Mox Amber is basically a mulligan. Um, I'm going to keep, though. We have a path. Yeah, Eldrazi Tron is one of, one of my least favorite decks in the history of Magic. It is the most planless pile of cards that works half the time and does broken things, and then it's just an embarrassment half the time. Um... Maybe we just mulligan. Sand's kind of mopey. We have like turn three Thalia off a bunch of painting lands. Yeah, I was in a mulligan. This is better. Yeah, we gotta top that. Like, Aldrazi Tron is one of, like, the most inconsistent decks in the history of Magic. And I just hate inconsistency. Ooh, Blast Zone's cute. Blast Zone's definitely cute. Alright, I mean... We're not doing much for a while, unfortunately. Um, but... Sh 
sure. Our our whales have been warped. Okay. Dovin, not really that impressive, but it's a card. Nice mana base. Waste, waste, blast zone, Urza's mine. This is good to say if they have Thought Knot. I guess they'll Thought Knot away the Urza's Runner's Blast. I feel like my Karns isn't getting a lot of relevant cards in these matchups. What is that? Just tap four and say go. Samaru. Alright, I mean, here's Karn for you. Yeah, Blister for 2 makes sense. Okay. What are we getting this time? I mean, the coding means we can start Stone Raining them next turn. Yeah, I like coding, I think. Um, Blister doesn't seem like it's doing much. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the coding. They crank up the blast zone. Karn does kill Ballista. That's cute. Of course, obviously, the combo here with, with liquid metal coating is if you plus Karn, it turns an artifact into a creature with power and toughness equal to the mana cost. And. I'm oh, sorry, it, it doesn't kill Ballista, you're correct. Um, so it kills zero zeros, or it turns. Zero amount of artifacts into zero zeros, so you can target lands and then kill them, which is cool. So, and it's also, yeah, not yet. It doesn't kill Blista for a number of reasons. All right, so we get to now we get to go bananas. Um, we get to play coding and Isamaru, and oh, they can't even ping with the ballista because it's a it's a null rod. So that's dope. I feel like our deck's actually working this game. But they also didn't do anything, though, so that's, that's kind of, like, not super appealing. So three. We can actually attack with Mobilize District, right? We have one, two, three. It's only one to activate, and it has Vigilance. Thank you, Jim, for years of great information and fun. You are great. Thanks, Rick. Resub. This thing having Vigilance is pretty wild, too. Oh, no. They have Dismember? That's really bad for us. They're not going to Dismember. Dovin, right. Whew. Thank God. I did not consider Dismember. Because now I... We, we need to cast Cody to kill this Blast Zone, so... So we target Blast Zone, make it an artifact, we plus on it, and Stone Rain. So this interaction is pretty great. Uh, just Karn and Coding by itself is quite nice. So I feel like in a game like this, this, this the deck is working better. With its more kind of prison-y elements. I feel like the 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 random 1-1s one or 2-2s two for 1 aren't as important a part of the plan. What's up, Jiggy Wiggly? 3 month 3 sub, welcome back. Alright, cool. So you won. That was cool. That was definitely cool. So the, the prison -y parts of the deck are sweet. Um, Karn's powerful. Karn's powerful. The problem is without Mox Amber, if we're not casting these cards fast enough, it doesn't do much. Maybe we just want to have like Noble Hierarch in our deck instead. This and this, this big poo-poos. 
On the play, maybe we just keep this because we have a waste a strip mine. We can't keep this now otherwise. Alright. Uh, do we need another Gideon? I guess. Oh no, another Aether Vile deck? Oh no. I guess Karn's good against Vile. The problem is Arbiter, you're saying, we're saying Arbiter is great because we drew a Ghost Quarter. We can't afford to sacrifice Ghost Quarter. We have a bunch of three drops in our hand, you know? So I don't even know if this deck wants to be sacrificing its lands at all. I think the, I think the Arbiter package has to go. Just gotta go. All right, Karn me. Maybe Arbiter or Heart of Kirin? I think we just Heart of Kirin. I don't think Arbiter matters. We're not we're not going to sacrifice our land anytime soon. We need to cast our spells, so. They have a handful of five spells and two vials. It's tough. Heart's going to play some good defense, too, which is good. Honestly, we can give it lifelink as well, which is pretty cool. The boot? They're giving us the boot. Yeah, Aether Vile Tribal is definitely not what we want to play against with this deck. What are the playable green legends? Are there any playable one and two mana green legends? There's like the the one green legend that like makes servos, right? I think it's the only one mana green legend, aside from Rise the Redeemed. Are there any good two mana green legends? So I'm starting to think is that just wants Noble Hierarch, just to cast these Planeswalkers early and cast Karn early. All right, they took good Gideon. We still have bad Gideon. Galaxy means we can't cast our Planeswalkers, though. We can't cast Karn. Castle. So the problem is, like... Ooh, boy. They have another Freebooter, or they have a copy. That's bad. So now we've lost our other Gideon. Yeah, this just seems really hard. Uh, I mean, yeah, taking both of our Planeswalkers is pretty brutal. Reprint Rafelos and call it a day. Rafelos is pretty busted. Problem is that the cheaper legends are mostly like aggro cards. You know, we're not really like an aggro deck. I think that's kind of the way this deck is, is misconstrued. Is that it's not really like an aggro deck. It feels more like of a planeswalkery prisony deck. You know. I mean. That's a Mantis Rider. Right, like we, we definitely need some amount of aggro stuff to Oh my god. Alright. This is this is <laughs> that's brutal. Lieutenant plus another Mantis Rider, we are dead. Okay, so 
we're not gonna bring in torpor orbs. We're gonna search for it, right? Like. Yeah, playing artifact mana wouldn't really work. Hmm. Alright, so I want the Ronus Blast um, and the Path to Exile. We can cut the two Thalias again. Uh, that's basically it, honestly. Amara's not bad. Amara is a pretty good crew for Heart of Kirin. Um... We're already playing Rise of Canopy. I feel like just Noble Hierarchs are where we want to be. And maybe we want to like cut back on the one drops, just play a couple of them, and play like a couple Mox Ambers, and lean a little more on mana creatures. Casting any of these on turn two is pretty good, as is casting Karn on turn three. The mana creatures just play badly with Mox Amber and Cloud Keeper, though. Maybe, maybe Cloud Keeper and Mox Amber aren't great. Also, mana creatures get swept up in Urza's Ruinous Blast. Hmm. He's, he's Mox Amber decks. I feel like Mox Amber is a card that has not been cracked yet. People have tried a lot of different things. I think Cloudkeeper is good if you're casting good cards with it, you know. Um, it does seem very good with Ruinous Blast and Karn. Um, I also cast Heart of Kirin, which is cool. I'm not sure what... Are there other legendary artifacts that cost two mana? If we had a Mox Amber, his hand is great, but yeah, Dovin's also kind of mopey. I mean, we haven't played against a deck where Dovin's actually good. I'm sure we play against the Serum Visions deck, because this card's insane, but... Right, we're going to keep... I mean, if you just draw Planeswalker, we're fine, right? Just one drop into Planeswalker, Heart of Kieran, etc. That's a Thalia. That's fine. I'm pretty cool with that, actually. Kark's Thumb, two mana, legendary artifact. Done. Done. Alright, so. Thanks, Magic. We could cast Heart of Kieran here. Um, they're not going to do too much that's scary this turn. And Thalia can stop them from being good next turn. I actually kind of like that. Let's play Heart of Kieran first. They're not going to start making blockers until, like, the next turn. Like, this turn is, like, you know, a Freebooter, a Noble Hierarch, something like that. So let's get the Thalia in play when we can attack with Heart of Kirin and start building against... They can, uh, the turn before they start, like, really building their board. Arbiter. That's not bad either, but we're not going to use that, I don't think. this turn. A hope of gear prior doesn't turn on Mox Amber. Alright, so I mean Heart of Kieran seems very powerful. I do like Heart of Kieran. Um Is there other like Maybe this could be a Chalice of the Void deck. Like, you just cut all the creatures that stink, play like three or four Cloud Keepers, Deputy of Detention, all right, and play, um, like, Chalice Spirit Guides. All right, there goes Thalia. Fortunately, our Ghost Quarter doesn't seem very good anymore, but... All right, so we get to Arbiter, Redeemed. All 
Like, Heart of Huron kills really quickly. Like, Heart of Huron's a good magic card. You know, like... Maybe I should have killed the Ziggurat. I don't think it matters. The Ziggurat can cast cards like Deputy and stuff. Which aren't humans. That might have been better. That's good for us. They're just cracking their canopy. That's the first thing they do. I think taking Thalia is interesting. Like, Heart of Kieran's kind of a house. Alright, I mean, this feels pretty good. Gideon also feels pretty good. I think we're just going to be plussing on Deputy... And then crewing and attacking. Alright, sweet. Heart of Kieran. Heart of Kieran's great. Alright, sweet. Let me hear that back. Jacko, what's up, my friend? Yes, of course, my friend. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, all the uh, decks I play today will be on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. Uh, of course, I stream sometimes, and there may not be times that work for you. So YouTube is always available, uh, youtube.com slash jimdavismtg. Check it out. All right, I mean, this has turn two Gideon and Path Exile. Uh, we can't really mulligan the sand, so... Yeah, I think that... The Heart of Kirin being legendary and just killing faster and being better with Planeswalkers makes it better than, than Copter, yes. I think Smogor's Copter is an underplayed card in Modern, but... So a pretty good start, but their starts are usually just better and they fill the board bigger, so the flying on Hardik here might end up being like really important. How does this deck compare to Loxobots? It's very different. Loxobots is more of like a all in the aggro deck. Oh, Thalia, yeah, that's rude. Uh might have to path to exile Thalia? That stinks. Uh, I think that's what we got to do, unfortunately. We currently can't cast our Planeswalkers. And if we can get Karn online in time to play a Torpor Orb, that'd be cool. It seems pretty tough to do. But yeah, doing nothing here seems difficult. I'm not a fan of this, but... Happily trade here, because that champion's going to get really, really big really, really fast. Sweet. There's a way to build this deck with Mox Opal in addition to Mox Amber. That seems hard. Alright, they didn't block. They got my hopes up and they crushed my dreams. Their hand needs to be really bad for uh, these next few turns to go well for us. Again, the Planeswalkers just don't play super well against a deck that's going wide and big fat quickly. The Bugler. 
Yeah, I, I agree. It's possible maybe maybe you just don't want Mox Amber. Maybe you just want to be playing Cloud Keeper and Mox Opal. And I'm not sure what other artifacts you can play, though. All right, so 2-3 Bugler shuts down the world here, unfortunately. Uh, and then we, if we plus Gideon, then we can't even really do much with it. We probably need to Karn. I guess Karn minus for Torpor Orb. What do they get on this thing? They got Deputy of Attention. That's kind of a tilt. I guess they're playing Karn for Torpor Orb. I mean, like... They play one island, one planes. This will probably make them cast Deputy next turn, so it actually does something. Like, there's no other land, there's, there's, it just, there's no other real mana acceleration besides Cloudkeeper and Mox Amber. I feel like they have to cast Deputy here, right? Before it turns, I guess I guess the the orb turns off all of their cards, so it might be getting into a pretty deep grindy game here. I mean, if they make champion into like a five five, we can giddy in it, which is good. Ugh, that's bad. So they're both. This is attacking me, this is attacking Karn. Um, what's our sideboard look like? Is Karn worth saving? Against creatures, we have Walking Ballista. That's really it, uh, as far as Karn goes. So it's a question of if, is Karn worth saving? If I trade, actually, I think I want to trade with Bugler anyway. Just trade with Bugler and then play Torpor Orb and Gideon plus on Champion. And then they just have a Noble Hierarch and a Thalia's Tenant to com combat us with. I think, I think this is fine. Well, they own an Arbiter. It's, I mean, that's not really, really re not, not really relevant at the moment. Yeah, it's not really a thing. Gideon plus on this and get the torpor orb going and I think we're just gonna plus Karn until your next turn up to one target non-creature artifact I can make torpor orb and do a 2-2 two -two. doesn't really do much though because they just exalt it anyway alright we're just gonna plus Karn I think we're in like pretty good shape here, honestly. Um, I guess Mantis Rider is a disaster, but aside from Mantis Rider, the board is mostly under control, and we are getting close to micro th micro synth whatever. We have some blockers. We plus on Torpor Orb. It's a two-two. It doesn't really matter because they have the Exalted on Noble Hierarch anyway. Um. And maybe it makes it vulnerable to, like, Dismember or some weird card we didn't think of. Alright, they have Mana Strider. That's the worst. Alright. Um, I'm 
Now what? They're attacking Gideon. I mean, if they don't attack Karn, we draw a Mana Source. We get to lock him out of the game as far as casting spells. The problem is we might just die to the Mantis Rider. Also, once Gideon dies, and then this thing's unlocked, too. Yeah, I think his deck wants an Incinerating Bridge on the board. I think his deck wants to be... I mean, Ruinous Blast, Blast would be a great draw, obviously, yes. But I think his deck wants to be a little more prisony and a little less mopey creaturey. All right, so we drew Path to Exile. Uh, but... I mean, I can go get a Walking Ballista with Karn. I can Arbiter. I can definitely damage their ability to play spells. We can Path, Champion, Arbiter, kill both territories, and then get a Ballista. The problem is this Rider is just going to kill us. And then that, that turns off Urza's Ruinous Blast isn't out. Yeah, I don't think I bother trying to... Um, I bother trying to... Like, Wasteland them. She didn't hope they don't have spells. Um, correct, Mox isn't active. That's not... That's true, actually. We, we couldn't cast uh, Ruinous Blast even if we drew it. Yeah, Mox Amber kind of sucks. Uh, fortunately. I guess I... Yeah, it's, it's good to do it now. And I'll, I'll plus on the orb now, because now we block this little, little poopers. What's up, Zach? It is certainly possible that Mox Amber just isn't good. Amber does not tap for colorless. It taps for one color of mana among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. If I ghost quarter them, I just die to Mantis Rider. It just cuts off too many of my outs. Then we're down to two mana, and we just don't have anything going on. I think you mostly need to hope that they're on a lot of cards that Torpor Orb turns off. And, uh, never mind, another Mantis Rider. Alright, we're dead. Unfortunately, Mantis Rider is like the one card in the deck that Torpor Orb doesn't turn off, and we're dead. If we had a bridge in our board, I think we'd be fine. So, we're definitely, it's obviously, a very complicated deck to build. I think we're missing a, a bridge in the sideboard for sure. Um, if we had Snaring Bridge, we would probably win this game, honestly, between Torpor Orb and Snaring Bridge. Eventually, we would just draw the things we need and just kill all their lands or whatever and kill them in some, in some way. We could even just, like, Gideon Emblem and just deck them. Yes, we're playing the, the Days Undoing deck later today. Connolly Woods uh, Pitch Blue deck. Yes, I think killing Karn is definitely the thing you want to do here. Oh, no. No. Why is Leon and Arbiter so bad? No. We can't even cast it. I don't know what we can draw to even cast it. How about that whammy?
Uh, so close, but so far away. That's a huge tilt. All right. Rotor's Blast does seem really good. Um, okay. We're learning. We're learning. We are one and two. We've lost two Aether Vile decks. Um, and we're learning a lot about our deck. Very, very hard deck to build. Like, you could use, like, green or black as a bridge. Just use, like, black discard spells. Or you could use green acceleration. Uh... I mean, black discard spells also give you, like, Kaya, which is really good. Oh, my God. Three pair. All right. This is good. Let me get bottom this. We already have three mana sources. Yeah, there's definitely something here. Like, it's just... It's just a very, very difficult mix of cards to try and figure out. Oh, man. Another go-wide creature deck? Ugh. Kill me. Wish I had started the full four, uh, the full four Ursus Runes Blast, you know? El Chupaca. Vault Scourge. You got it. Yes. The Battle of the Moxes. What Mox is better? Mox Opal or Mox Amber? That's kind of a tilt. Uh, I think pathing our own creatures just to cast Gideon is pretty, pretty ridiculous, so we're not going to do that. Well, that's a consideration. We have main deck Null Rod in our deck. Um, so that's kind of cool. If I had known we were drawing that, I probably would have pathed myself, but... No. If Mox Amber was turned on by, uh, by Injago Castle, Mox Amber would be busted. Busted. Conky Donk, it's almost like you are setting things up for me. Yes, we are playing a Narset deck later in the stream with a bunch of pitch spells. Narset is very good in eternal formats. All right, they're going to play it in here. It's only four. I'm not going to path yet. I want to try and nab the... I want to get the plating off of uh, a creature before I play Karn, so... This is seven. Then I play Gideon. I plus. Then I get to path something end step. Yeah, this is fine. So they can move it over to Vault Scourge. So they have two Nexus. Three Nexus. Okay. Well, Karn doesn't need to kill Opal because Opal won't do anything. Um... Hopefully they fire up both Blink Moth here. That would be ideal. Excellent. So, the game's not over yet, but we are definitely in, in very good shape.
Karn hits anything. That's, that's why Karn works. That's why there is a liquid metal coating in our sideboard. We can search for that, turn their lands into artifacts, and destroy them with Karn. Which is pretty cool. Alright, so we're going to save that, and more importantly, disconnect the plating. So when I cast Karn, uh, they can't re-equip it. We take four... Oh. Uh, everything was attacking Gideon. I did not realize that. That's a tilt. Draw land. That really sucks. It looked like only the, the Vault Scourge was attacking Gideon. Uh, that's bad. Mox Amber is just the worst. I mean, Gideon's gonna die no matter what. We want them to put the plating on a non-signal pass creature. They put it onto the Nexus. It's one, two, three, four, five, six poison. Land. My kingdom for a land. Alright, so they're going to kill Gideon. This is fine. Alright, and the plating's going to fall off again, so we just need to draw a land so we can cast our card. And everything will be fine. Everything attacks Gideon again. Alright, Gideon's real dead. Land! Oh god, kill me. We're running out of windows where the plating is going to be unequipped. Because now I just put on the signal pest. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, yeah, it's only eight. Upward. Oh, well, that was a stinky game. Our opponent looked probably felt they crushed us, but they were one land away from probably never winning. That kind of stinks. Mox Amber, you let me down. Leon Arbor, let me down. All right. Um, we're going to want. The Ruinous Blast and the Path to Exile. We're going to cut the Thalias. Um, and pretty familiar boarding. Come on, Karin. We need you, bud. We need you. So yeah, I think that the, the idea of this deck is very cool, but... I think Mox Amber is probably just a trap, as is Leon and Arbiter. Um, I mean, Arbiter's... I mean, what am I going to bring in for Arbiter? Like, Arbiter's probably worse than Thalia, because Thalia's just going to tax our stuff and not their stuff. I could bring in, like, a Pithing Needle and, like, a Walking Ballista, I guess. I think Thalia actively hurts us, because it's never going to affect them at all. And it's actively going to make our spells cost more. And it doesn't really affect the board that much. Um, yeah, I mean, so Thalia's a legend, so our Mox Amber turns on. But all our spells cost one more, 
so Mox Amber doesn't matter. So there's a lot of tension in this deck uh, between Thalia, Arbiter, Mox Amber, crappy one drops, good planeswalkers. Also tension with Karn itself, and how many sideboard slots do you want? This card. This Mox Amber card. Alright. This is also terrible. Um, I guess we keep and just try and draw a good Planeswalker on two. Nope. Alright, so if we, if we draw any amount of Planeswalker, uh, I think our hand's fine. Double Kithian on turn one. Try and trick me, pants man. Alright, Planeswalker, draw step. Big Planeswalker. Any three mana Planeswalker. Or Hardicurin. Hardicurin's okay. It's not. Requires more things to be good, but. Yeah, because, like, the thing is that I'm playing these crappy one drops. If. This is just a noble hierarch. I would get the mana acceleration that I want and not need to play Mox Amber, you know? Sure. Haha, -ha, joke's on you. Ooh. Dovin, Hand of Control. A. Eh? Like, there's no doubt Hardicurin's dope. That much for sure. And yes, artifacts cost more. So, Arpa Ravager costs three. That's right. All your spells cost one more. What you gonna do about it, El Chupacabras? Don't get the tall. Thirty-two damn time flies. Duncan, thirty-two month resub. You're the bomb, my friend. Thank you so much. You great. Vault scourge, sure. Ink Moth Nexus. Sure. Alright, I mean, that's not a decent, not a bad uh, Overseer turn, but we are getting in for six next turn. Feels pretty good. Um, our Ghost Quarters are obviously super live here, too. So, I think we're going to just crack this canopy. I draw a planes wall. Oh, that's actually a really good draw. All right, sweet. No. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Let me just take out the overseer and prevent the vault scourge.
The good thing, too, is they were playing mana creatures. The fear you have when you play mana creatures is that your opponent plays Anger of the Gods or whatever and kills all your stuff and your mana creatures. If we're playing all Planeswalkers and Vehicles, we don't really care about that. So, like, traditional creature removal won't be great against us anyway. What's up, Simon? We're certainly not over the finish line yet. I mean, they have many blockers. What are they doing here? They are casting a spell that costs as a color. Another Vault Scourge? Sure. All right. Another Ghost Quarter. I guess we should just be Ghost Quartering them, right? Because they just have no more basics left, so it's just an actual Wasteland. Um, we are running out of food for our heart of Kirin. You know, Dovin's not going up anytime soon. Uh, I guess Kithian does become indestructible. All right. This is kind of a weird spot. I kind of want to keep Dovin in play because it taxes them. I kind of want to triple ghost quarter them just to like put them off all their mana. Um, I also kind of want to attack them. And we can just pay the light, pay the mana for Kithian. All right. Uh, I think we're going to just crew and attack. They have to do something defensively. We have Indestructible on Kithian. Yes, we're playing in Nidmizzet Reborn deck a little bit later in the stream. They only have two cards in hand, and they have a bunch of mana. So, like, Triple Strip Mine isn't even that good. Um, that's a block. Sure. I mean, now I'm definitely going to Triple Strip Mine, so... I should have not played the first, not played that. All right, dove in hand of control. Yes, yeah, they draw land and like, they just have a bunch of mana to cast all their spells anyway. Oh, that's a draw. Never mind. All right. Heart of Cure. <laughs> so, we can crew Heart of Cure and attack, but that's it. I think we should have the one Ghost Quarter in play. Because now we draw like a Gideon, we can't even cast it. Yeah, I think Ghost Quarter is just bad in this deck. Um... I think Ghost Quarter is a huge trap. We just need our mana to actually cast spells, you know? Like, they block a Vault Scourge here. Our Amber... I mean, I should not attack with the Kithian. Our Amber turns off. I mean, just like... Or we're going to lose this game with a Heart of Kirin in play and nothing to do with it. Long stream today. I'll be on all day. Maybe 10-ish 10, 10 hours, maybe. Oh, boy. We are definitely losing this game. Uh, that's a start. That's a start. Um... First deck of a day, yep. Okay. No one card we can draw next turn will crew Heart of Kirin. Can't cast Gideon. 
Mox Amber is a worthless piece of garbage. What's up, Xerox? Yeah, I don't think we can win now that they have flying blockers too. Like, they just have multiple trump blockers. We just don't really have a way to get through. Galvanic Blast, us. Okay. That's enough for me. That's thanks. Could have had game one if we could have cast Karn. Mox Amber has basically been just beating us over the head over and over and over again with how bad it is. But, again, as I always say when we play, when we play these, these decks, the goal here is to learn, not to win. And I think we're learning a lot about Heart of Kieran, Karn, Planeswalkers, feeling like a nice start to an archetype. Um... The one drops don't feel great in Mox Amber. Like the, the whole Mox Amber package just feels bad. And then, then the Death and Taxes package feels bad. But the Planeswalker Heart of Cure and package feels pretty good. So the question becomes, what's the way to best maximize that package? Might be um, might be Noble Hierarch, might be in black, it gives you discard spells. So you can play discard spells into your Planeswalkers. Also gives you Kaya. Um, and green, I think Noble Hierarch just seems really good. Um, I think if we're like, we can still play like one or two Mox Ambers in that deck, maybe. We just can't rely on it as a mana source. You know, it's more of like a little extra mana, and it might not even be worth it then. We got Trips. Full House. I guess we're keeping. Oh my god. Alright, I'm buying that. Sarkin is really good. Uh, Anger of the Gods. This is going to be the mono red, like, Blood Mooney deck. I mean, Sarkin is really good, but I don't know if we need that kind of, like, late game power, and I'm not sure exactly what red gives us. Spirit Guide, Gemstone Caverns, Desperate Ritual, Rabble Master. Okay, we are dead. Content, smiley face. Will you do a deck tech for this list? Absolutely, Artemis. Thanks for the donation bonus. Appreciate that. We'll do that after this match. At the end of this league. Well, um, I'm not sure if we can actually beat Terminal Rabble Master. The thing is, Zergo is no different than Isamaru. Like, we're, we're trying to not play crappy one-drops. Uh, it's probably not even worth playing that, yeah. Make a token, then Karn. We just need to deal with this Rabble Master somehow. Thanks for following everyone. If you haven't followed, hit that follow button. Of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Y'all are great. Thanks for supporting me. Alright, so yeah, no blocks. Make a token. Try running the Planeswalker Heart Package in a Blood Moon Chalice Shell. It's interesting. I've never been a fan of the Blood Moon Shower shells, but. Mox Amber, right on time. Alright, so. We have to double block the Rabble Master this turn, and then we need to beat these goblins.
Uh, Sonic Nem. Thank you for reminding me of them. Karn Ski. Minus Ski. And I think we're getting our Ballista. And we are probably double blocking the Rabble Master next turn. Yeah, this card's probably just bad. This card seems like it's good only if you play it exactly on turn one. Um, I think these three tokens should probably go after Karn. Um, because now I just have a Karn in play, and me being at five is not that much different than me, be, me, me being at eight. That's pretty good. Oh, I guess the Amber's off now, but that's fine. Um, I can't even play this card, so it's whatever. We can search for... Not really much to get. We're just going to play Big Ballista here. Um, I don't know this plus. Like, we go to three, and then on top of Ballista, and then I don't think our life total matters that much. Like, our opponent's deck's on a burn deck, you know? Like, they're, they're not going to burn us out. Cool. We beat Turn 1 Robin Master. Granted, they didn't do actual anything else, but... Plus on my own Amber, just to show it what's up. I like that. All right. Uh, I want the Ruinous Blast, I think. I guess I want Path to Exile. Leon and, Ar Leon and Arbiter is just buns. Do I even want Thalia? Thalia just seems so bad in this deck. We gotta cast our spells, you know? It does block stuff well. No, I think the fact that Amber doesn't work with Colorless Legends is intentional, because they don't want Amber to be too good. Um, Hakori is for any slow matchup. Tron. Winter Orb is a very powerful effect. Like, Winter Orb is awesome. So, um, yeah, whatever. This is fine. Uh, Simon, not really. I haven't seen it. Tithe Taker instead of Thalia? That's interesting. The problem is that it's not a legend, but I think Tithe Taker is just like a cool card. But, alright. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're keeping. It's not great. That's true. Well, well, Mox says legendary creature or land, so Mox Amber wouldn't turn itself on anyway, but... Where's his Ruinous Blast? Turn to Blood Moon would be pretty annoying here, even though we have like 11 planes in our deck. Ooh. Hello. They are also playing Karn the Great Creator, and they have it on turn two with double Spirit Guide. And now we're dead. Because now they can Stone Rain us every turn. Yeah, Karn's a real card, for sure. Uh... Yeah, getting out of Zendikar seems really good with this, like, suite of cards. I mean, we're dead. We can't do anything. They just... They stone rain us every turn. And that's basically it. I guess you could path our own creature. But I don't really think we're ever getting, getting ahead of this Karn. Um, I guess Arbiter can attack it. Um, goes to three, Arbiter attacks it. I guess, yeah. It's hard to hear, it just might not do anything. Yeah, new card is weird. 
it unfortunately it's not so much new Karn as it is all of the obnoxious artifacts that it allows. Um, you know, there's so many like Chalice of the Voids and cards like that in sideboards that are just like you're just like, ugh, really? Okay. Um, Kithian is interesting, as is Heart of Kirin. We could just play Kithian, say go, and then path our own creature to replace the land we lose, or we could just play Heart of Kirin as well and just probably try to attack them with it. We're going to do that. So now Heart of Kirin can kill Karn next turn, so the coding is not going to do much. Uh, our hand's a little anemic, but... Sweet. All right, big draw step here. Anything with two power or loyalty. Oh, never mind. The hard guy doesn't do anything. Duh. I'm dumb. I am dumb. Uh, hard guy doesn't do anything because it's a null rod. Also, it's so easy to forget the to forget the static abilities on planeswalkers. I've done it about a hundred times already. Um. All right. So maybe we just make a token here and then path it. They're probably going to start stone raining us, though. And we can just probably never get this, this ruinous blood. How oh, does this legendary anyway? I mean, our, our hand doesn't do anything. All right. Yep. It's not like it starts stone raining us. Um, we get to make a token. We'll have two creatures in play. Up to. All right, I took a damage I didn't need to take. So I forgot the Karn ability again. Opponent says, that's my 5-0 list. That's my Heart of Kirin. Well, the 5-0 list that I saw was not playing Heart of Kirin. So. I think we need to make another token. I guess the district can now attack the Karn, which is pretty good. They can just kill it, though. This is... 3 to activate, and then I can path it also. Actually, I can activate it and fizzle it. If they try and do that. So that's actually really good. So, if they target it, we get to activate it and fizzle it. If they don't target it, then the district, the, the district just kills Karn. So, But I can't activate it if it's an artifact. So I have to activate it now. Alright, so this is decent for us. Unless they have Anger of the Gods, in which case I will snap concede, because that would be a blow up. Apparently, Z Rogue's deck just got posted on the 5 0 deck lists today. So let's take a look. Give Z Rogue a little, a little screen time here. Not on goldfish yet. Control F is our friend. ZX, pretty easy to find. That is true. Opponent isn't lying. There they are. There's screen time. Very similar to what we're playing, but. 
still has seems like it has most of the problems that we're that we're having too. So, all right, um, just plusing that. Mobilized district has been named, so I can't activate that anymore. Uh, we draw a land here. We're actually in really good shape. I want to path my creature here. I path the the thing. I get to untapped, and I guess Ruin's Blast can't kill with Karn, but it will kill the coating and the Spyglass. Yeah, let's do it. Without a coating, Karn is not nearly as good, so. Gideon? Yeah, it's basically irrelevant. Okay. So, District's back on, Gideon's in the tank, back up Ruinous Blast, Legion War Boss, sure. You used to call me on my Thanks for following, everybody. If you haven't followed, hit that follow button. Of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Welcome. My name is Jim Davis. We're playing a bunch of awesome modern War of a Spark decks today. I'm pumped. You should be too. Um... Let's do this. So this cost two to activate. Karn can get back the coding. That's true. Because it was exiled. And this says outside the game or in exile. Wishes can't do that usually. But, all right, uh, that's fine though. This cost Three to activate, that makes it two, we can't attack. Alright, we're just playing Gideon and plusing. Yeah. Plus on the boss itself, I guess. Our blocks here aren't great. Let's look at the mentor. I, mean, I get to I get to ruin his blast next turn, so. And they can't kill Gideon, which is good. Okay, that's a legend. But the tokens aren't. So... Alright, so we still got to attack the car with Gideon next turn. They're not attacking with the war boss? That's pretty wild. Uh sure. Yeah, Urza's Ruinous Blast has been pretty busted. Uh I think this should be more of a focus of the deck for sure. This just seems really, really good. Um all right, blast away. Boom, shakalaka. And then I'm fine making this a 4-4, attacking Karn. Sure. So we're definitely wearing him down here. You want to know why this game is going well? It's really very simple. No Mox Amber. Ensnaring Bridge? Alright. That's annoying, I guess. It does make it hard to actually deal with Karn. Uh... Oh, crap. Never mind. We're dead. Uh... I mean, I can dink Karn for one, or I can just make tokens. Oh, duh, I'm an idiot. Forgot the static ability, again. Yeah, 
think I just make a token. This game has been very swingy. I feel like we, a, we can't lose, we can't win, we can't lose. Like, now we probably can't win. Add red, red. Another war boss. Yeah, we, if we just draw our own Karn, you know, that would be certainly reasonable. I mean, beating Chandra seems very difficult right now. Doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I think we're in, in big trouble here. So now we just get the liquid metal coating and silly grind all our lands away. Yeah, Karn's real. Oh, we're getting the lattice. Never mind. And we lose. Alright. Karn's a real card in modern for sure. Karn is a very real card in modern. Alright, let's try game three here. Um. Yeah, fun. Chandra's good too. Chandra's definitely good. I mean, obviously good gameplay and things go back and forth, but a close back and forth game is different than a I can't possibly win anymore. I can't possibly lose anymore. I can't possibly win anymore. And that's the kind of effect that cards like Ensnaring Bridge have. All right, we this hand's just terrible. I'm gonna mulligan. Thalia just seems actively terrible in this deck. Uh, this hand's terrible too. Oh no! I'm gonna mulligan again. We just can't cast anything. All right, we are on the play. All right, we're going to four. All right, keep skis. Bottom skis. Dead skis. We draw runner, runner, land, I guess. Could do it. Yeah, Ruinous Blast seems great. We'll discuss the deck as a whole uh, after this match. This is a deck I want to work on more, honestly. I think there's some pretty cool stuff happening in this deck. But there's also a lot of bad stuff happening, too. Most of what we have in play right now. Bad one drops and Mox Amber. They have a bridge in play, Arepi. And we can't cast any spells anymore. Alright, they have a war boss. I guess we're pathing. Alright, land up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah, eventually our opponent would just kill us with Chandra Emblem. Or they could just make 100 million tokens with their War Boss and then one turn a tackle with, with, the, with the cards in end. The boss is back? Alright. That's bad. Boss, much better than Rabble Master in this board state. Uh, we play Dovin, we plus on War Boss. Or whatever, minus on War Boss. They attack with both things, they mentor. We get the block at 1-1. One, one. We're probably in huge trouble here. The thing is, if we plus on the goblin, we block the war boss. I guess that actually is better. Yeah, I should, I should, I should plus on the goblin. Alright, they have Chandra. It doesn't matter. 
Right. We are we are comically dead. So with the with the SMR of Black, it'll block the one one, but yeah, defending our planeswalkers has been an issue. Um, all right, so let's talk. Let's talk about this deck a little bit. Obviously, one four, pretty bad. This deck did five zero. So, and honestly, it five zero twice because the our opponent also five zero with it. Uh, opponent five zero with this version of it, and then there was a previous version of it that also five zero. So, there's clearly something here. You know, um, the problem is that it may be winning in spite of Mox Amber and Isamaru rather than because of it, and it may be winning because these cards are really good. So. This part of the deck is great. Heart of Kirin was great. Basically, all of this sucked. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. All of this sucked. I'm sorry, hold on. Get Mox Amber in that pile, too. All of this sucked, but this part of the deck seemed pretty great. I guess Path is good, but... So, like, the the Prisony, Ursa's Ruinous Blast, Planeswalkery... I guess Thalia, Heretic, Cathar wasn't really necessary, but... The Gideon seemed good. Dovin seemed pretty good. Heart of Kieran seemed great. Karn seemed great. Um, so the question becomes, how do you build this deck? What do you What do you want to do? Ghost Quarter sucked also, yes. Ghost Quarter sucked. The Cloud Keeper kind of sucked. District was good. But so the question becomes, how do you want to build this deck? And I think I'm going to try this deck again. Uh, I think we probably want to be green for like Noble Hierarch and things of that nature. Um, maybe we want like one or two Mox Amber, if any. Might just want none, honestly. Um, probably want a third Heart of Kirin. Not sure what green offers us by way of Planeswalkers. Toss it's black, too. There needs to be some sort of acceleration. We gotta cast these things a little earlier. Um, it's possible that that could be like a Simeon Spirit Guide Chalice the Void deck. Um, because we're cutting all the ones anyway. That's possible. That is definitely possible. Uh, a lot of ways to go with this, but I think one of the key cards was Urza's Ruinous Blast. In any fair matchup, this card just seemed bananas. So this is that I'm going to work on. Um, there's definitely something here, but we got to find it because I don't think this is uh, where we're at currently. We can, can we consider adding the Celestial Cure and Ugin's Conjurant combo as an Armageddon? I don't see how that fits in this deck at all. Like, that combo's good, but... This is the first deck of a stream. Yep. So that's this deck. We got plenty more decks to play. We got uh, Killer Germs Black White Devotion deck for a little donation bonus league. It's not open yet, but Killer Germs the bomb. Uh, Connolly Woods Pitch Blue deck. This deck is dope. And we got a Neoform Cloudfin Raptor Evolve Prowess deck. Awesome. And a Nimizit Reborn deck. Awesome. So five awesome decks today. And. Uh, for watching on YouTube, of course, you can look for these in different videos. And, of course, stay tuned to the stream for more of these. For now, uh, that's it for the YouTube videos. So make sure you subscribe, right? You great.